The day has come. The day when I can't sing Christmas songs because it's not Christmas. Christmas is 11 months from now. I don't know what you guys are talking about. So, because of that, I wanted to sing one more song because I didn't... I didn't want to just leave it off at Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer or Jingle Bells or whichever was the last song I sang. Uh, so I wanted to sing a song that wasn't necessarily a Christmas song. Didn't ha it didn't say Christmas in the name. And it's something that was a little bit overshadowed by another song uh, that's been being played crazily and everywhere, aka Let It Go. I seriously heard Let It Go being blasted at a roller coaster park next to the ring of, uh, ring of Fire ride, for whatever reason. Uh, so, I'm going to, to sing a song that has to do with what we all want to help tide us over the remaining three months, yeah, three months, a little bit less than three, but it's not much less, um, of, of winter. So, let's get to that. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. It doesn't show signs of stopping, and I bought some corn for popping. The lights are turned way down low, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodnight, how I'll hate going out in the storm. But if you'll really hold me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. Oh, the fire is slowly dying, and my dear, we're still goodbying. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to Okami. Last episode, we entered Webkir, a village whose inhabitants are... I didn't want to do the moon there. ...are locked up in their homes, trying to de delay the inevitable of freezing to death in this blizzard. This time, we're going to be seeing the vil village's, uh, village's elder, Kemu, now that the chieftain Samical is no longer guarding the way. So, uh, before we do so, there are a couple things that I missed last episode. Uh, mainly there is a chest, a very chest right here, that contains a treasure. Not, not a collectible, just a treasure. And also the rabbits right next to it, which I can feed for some easy praise. So, now that we have 257, I actually don't really doubt that we're going to be able to upgrade health again this episode, which is awesome. We're almost, if I bark here, you can see that we're only two units short of having maximum health, which feels really good, considering we are not right at the end of the game. The end of the game is some ways to come. I mean, we are closer now than we ever have been, but, you know, it's, it's something that we're going to have full stats for a good long time. So it's not like, you know, right before the final battle, we're like, we have full stats now! We can enjoy it for one fight, which is like half an hour. Yay! But yeah, it, it's cool, because we'll be able to enjoy these stats for some time. Okay, there is a chest here that I also missed. I don't really blame myself for this one, because it's it's kind of where I ended off the episode, sort of, not really. And things kind of got scripted, and, you know, I didn't really have time to, to, to uh, explore. So let's go ahead and feed these bears. And then we can go into Kemu's house. Uh, first, I'd like to point something out. You see that waterfall over there? In the end of day sequence, it looks like it looks like that's a secret. In fact, let me go ahead and show you. In the in the cinematic, you'll get a good view of it on the left there, and it looks like something you can get inside. But I have not found a way to do that. So if you guys know, please tell me because I have not found a way, and I haven't seen it in any guide or anything. But it looks totally like it's a secret. Just there are no Conan blossoms there or catwalk statues or anything. It's kind of frustrating because it looks like it'd be an awesome secret. So anyway, uh, if we go over here, we can see Samco raging, which I believe I talked to him last episode. But also we have Kemu's door. Let's not keep him waiting since he is like one of the leaders of this village. Apparently we kept him waiting longer than I intended because he fell asleep. This is the village elder, Kemu, but looks like he might have already kicked the bucket. 
How many times did Grampier tan my hide? Bah, this is no time to be dredging up the past. Grrr. Who was that bad mouthing me? Looks like there's some hides to be tanned. He's back from the dead to tan people's hides. Oh, no. He's actually... He's not that hard to get away from, but... Uh, oh, he actually is kind of hard, because there's stuff blocking the way. Well, you know what they say. When in doubt... Bomb. Boom! He's dead! Or... Or he's not, he's invincible to a bomb. Well, you know what they also say? The shoulder is mightier than the bomb. Hmm? What happened? Was it a dream? Was I sleepwalking again? Sheesh, old man snooze a lot, tides hands, tides, <laughs> tides hands. He tides hands. That is a major funny slip up of the tongue. Uh, he tides hands. No, he tans hides in his sleep, too? Why, it's that little Isun. So then I wasn't dreaming. So he was tanning, trying to tan our hide on purpose. Webcure Village Elder, Kemu. I thought I heard Samical talking to someone outside. I must say, Isun, you've grown. Barely at all since I last saw you. Oh, put a cork in it, Gramps. Did you summon us just because you wanted someone to clobber? Ah, yes. Let's get down to business, eh? It is the White Wolf I wish to speak with. You've no doubt already heard this from Kai, but her little sister, Lika, has gone missing. Yeah, we know about that. She disappeared about the time the demons started running amok. That's right. And her disappearance threatens the very existence of our village. Okay. Things are off to a great note. Kai said something like that, too. I can see, what, see why you'd be worried. But don't you think you're exaggerating a bit? No, we are not exaggerating. Besides, how... how... Ugh. Besides, you have been gone so long, how could you possibly know? Lika has gained spiritual power far beyond my own. Her power is now the key f for saving the land of Kamui. Huh? Are you saying Lika's power can defeat those demons? Not exactly. There's another reason we need her power. It is for Ezofuji, the protector deity of Kamui. Now I knew that I know that Ezofuji is actually technically pronounced Ezofuji because E's are A's in in Japanese, but Ezofuji just seems it just seems better to me. And <laughs> since half the pronunciations of the names in the Kamui area are really hard to get down, I'm just going to be calling it Ezofuji because it's easier. As you know, Ezofuji is formed from two active volcanoes. Each year, I recite the volcanic incantation. That triggers an eruption that warms this frigid land of Kamui. But the demon's power has plunged, plunged Ezofuji into an icy slumber. Day by day, Kamui grows weaker and weaker, colder and colder. If we don't have Lika recite the volcanic incantation soon, the land of Kamui will become an icy tomb for us all. Why don't you just recite the incantation yourself, old man? I would if I could, but I no longer have the strength to pray in this raging blizzard. Any idea where Alika could be? That's the problem. We've searched high and low for that girl with no luck. Still, there is one place we have yet to look. Where? Yoshpet, the mysterious forest of deception. Gulp. I caught a, f a faint whiff of Lika emanating from Yoshpet. After all, I do have the keenest nose of all of the Oina tribe. I suspect she could be somewhere around here on your map. Okay, uh... This map's kind of unfamiliar to me because it actually contains Webkir as well as Kamui, so... Um... Okay, the bottom part is where we came into Kamui. So, everywhere from where we are down is actually the Kamui map. Um, and stuff above us is just places we have yet to be, yet to go. Uh, so that area right there, if I recall, is actually just a dead end. I'd like you to conduct a thorough search of that forest. You've got to be kidding me. I wouldn't touch that place with a 100- with a 10-foot pole. Oh, White Wolf, you are our last hope. Not me? Chief Samical must remain here to protect the villagers, and Oki has left the village on some fool's errand. You are the only one left. Hold on a minute, old man. Do you even know who this furball is? Do not mock me, little sprite. That pure white coat, those crimson markings, and that divine instrument. 
This is none other than the legendary wolf, Shiranui! That name is known far and wide, even in this distant land of Kamui. But I never dreamed the legendary wolf yet lives. Well, actually this here is... Shiranui, please! You must help us! Lika must recite the volcanic incantation soon. Without her, the land of Kamui will become an icy tomb. I beg you, you must find Lika. I had warned the villagers to be wary of strangers, but I'll make an, a special exception for you, and I'll open the village's far gate that leads to Leochi Lake. You should get what you need from the village before you set out. Thank you, old man. For a man who likes tan hides, you're surprisingly nice, and I'll go ahead and take your food. Since food isn't the problem with these people, it's it's warmth. Even though this actually looks like a very, a very cozy place with two fires going. He's cooking fish. Can I examine this? There's a raccoon mask here. I guess old man Kamu is still into collecting cheesy stuff like this. That's not che- well, actually... Actually, it's a little bit- it's a little bit cheesy. I'll- I'll agree with Isun on that. But this is cool! That mask is awesome. The white mask, it's like a ceremonial battle mask, which is awesome. And I can't really see? But the one behind that pillar looks like a- uh... Oh, what's the name? Oh, why can't I- The mask from Ocarina of Time. The yellow one. The- I can't forget the name. I, I I mean I can't I forgot the name. That's embarrassing. It starts with a K. I know that. But anyway, uh, that gate is now open, and that is actually a place we need to go. He didn't really state it. He just said that it's open now, and we can go there. But we actually need to go there in order pr in order to progress. So we will be doing that. But first. There are a couple things that now opened up to us, literally. Um, all of the villagers' doors are now open to you. You can go inside and talk to them. And I suggest that you do that when you play through this game, because it's not really necessary for me to do it, and I want to give you guys some incentive, incentive to play this game. It's really good, and, you know, it's, it's a game that you definitely should play if you have the Wii or Wii U. Uh, let's see. Enough of that. We can actually grab a, uh, the last stray bead, which I will do. But first, I would like to just stop by this merchant. Birds, freezing. kumu has been a mess ever since those demons went berserk. Villagers have been slaughtered. Poor Leek has been kidnapped. We don't know that. Body and soul alike have been frozen solid. But you, the village elder, has welcomed you as a guest. You'll want to use this opportunity to do a bit of shopping, huh? So how about buying some local products? Yes, I will do that. Uh, he will not appear until after you've spoken with old man Kamu. I should stop calling him that, because he's the elder, not an old man. Though he is that. Uh, so we can sell off all, all of our stuff, but this guy is actually very important. Oh, and the etched glass there, I have no idea where we got it, but it's worth 20,000 yen, so you should pick it up. Uh, this guy's special. I wanted to, to buy his stuff before we did the Devil Gate Trial Cave, even though I was kind of way off on when we need to do that, uh, because he, he sells two important things. Resurrection Beads, a new, uh, new rosary that we can grab. It uses Divine Light to guide lost souls to the right path, so we can buy that for 150,000 yen. And then Gold Dust, worth 20,000 yen apiece, and very worth it. Uh, next, I should probably upgrade my feedback, or not upgrade them, uh, restock on them, because I'm, I've been running a little bit low on fish feedbacks. So, there we go, we have 15 of everything, we have 4,800 yen left, and I don't think we should get anything else, we should save, we should save our money for now. So, we have a new weapon. Uh, the Resurrection Beads is a tier 4 rosary, I will be equipping two rosaries right now, just so I can get the same type of attack bonus, since I just learned that uh, last episode? I think last episode. Uh, and then we can also upgrade it with one of our three gold dusts. It's really cool, we have two gold dusts remaining, so we'll be good for a while on gold dust. Uh, yeah, there's nothing else I really want to do here. Oh, oh, actually that is something. Uh, I'm going to re-equip the Thieves' Glove, because I have no use for the Water Tablet right now, and it's extremely situational at best. Okay, so that being done, we have our new weapon, which I can get a nice close-up on. Look at that, it's so cool, it's purple, and blue, and it cycles, and it's cycly, and we can slide on around the ice, which is not a, not a thing. <laughs> it, it has nothing to do with the weapon we just got. Okay, so anyway, uh... Let's see, the new stray bead, if I recall. Yeah, it's up here. 
uh, right next to Kai's house is are some doors. Uh, after you talk with the village elder Kemu, they will now be open, and this area houses the next stray bead, the last. So here we are, and we have some minigame music playing because Otter Mask is a little kid and he's having fun. Woohoo! I've been playing in the snow and trying to make a big snowball. It got a bit bigger than I'd planned, though. All the grown-ups complain about the snow, but we kids love being outside. It doesn't matter how cold it is. Why don't you try making a big snowball too, Wolfie? I'm only a kid, so that's the biggest I can manage. But you're bigger than me, so you should be able to do better. Just keep on rolling that one there. Make it really, really huge. Okay, so we have an objective. However, I will be bypassing that right now for those of you who came here via the collectibles videos. I know, this is one of the first times I've mentioned you guys directly. Uh, I'm doing this to make it easier on Future Pal to place the annotations timestamp. So, there you go. At the back of the Snowball Playground, there's a chest that contains a stray bead. This is the only buried chest in this area, and it's very easy to see. Also, I should note that you cannot turn at nighttime here. I believe it's a, if it's already nighttime when you come in here, it will still not be night, um, and thus you cannot see buried chests. It will, the moon will show and the wolves will howl, however it'll just clear away and it'll still be daytime. You will not be able to see that buried chest, because it's not technically nighttime, for whatever reason. Okay, so for those of you who are actually watching this episode for the episode, uh, we have the Otter Mask, and we have an objective from him. This little snowball here needs to be gigantic. I'm going to be speeding this up. You're supposed to roll it uh, through these snow piles to make it bigger. And here's a gauge on how big it should be when we're done. Okay, you see Amaterasu's full single jump. It should be about that big. It should be about that tall. So I will meet you guys back when we have reached that goal. Oh, also another tip. Best way to steer these is just using the camera. It's very slight and you can kind of tap it and do slight uh, adjustments. Also, you should not be running at full speed because it's way too fast. Okay, let's speed up and play music through this. did it, Wolfie! I've never seen a snowball so huge! I can't believe you got it so big. It's almost scary, but really cool, too. You're definitely the Snowball King of Kamui now, Wolfie. And from that, we get 50 praise! First Hole Digging King, and now Snowball King. Boy, you sure have a bunch of silly titles. So, uh, like I was saying, your double jump is about as high as this. It's actually a little bit uh, a little bit too short, so yeah, make make the snowball bigger than your than your single jump. I think I said double jump earlier, but anyway, uh, before we leave this area, there's one last thing I'd like to grab. All these chests they're scattered around and, and also frozen. That's partially what these fires are for, though I think by this point they kind of expect you to have uh, to have infer. Well, actually, yeah, infernos. Or no, I'm no fire burst. I'm thinking fire burst. They would expect you to have fire burst, but also. Uh, these fires are here to provide a hazard for rolling around that snowball, because if you roll it in a fire, it will start to melt pretty quickly, so you want to avoid that. Same with rolling it in the in the water over there, that's also a hazard, so yeah, avoid that at all costs. There's nothing buried un uh, below the surface of the water, so don't bother. And there's the last chest right there. This one, I think, con contains one of the better rewards, because it's an exorcism slip M, 
and we haven't we don't get exorcism slips that often. Although I guess any treasure worth worth more than five thousand yen is better than a exorcism slip because they're they're worth that much. But it's all semantics. Um, so we're done here. There's nothing else for us to do. Goodbye, Otter Mask. I hope you don't freeze to death. You probably will. That's why we're here. We're here to fix that problem. We're not here to make him freeze to death. Okay, so with that business being done, we can go to Leochi Lake now. Like I said, it is required. Now, I'm going to be going a little bit off the beaten path in here. You'll know what, I'm, what I uh, am talking about in a second. But suffice to say, we're not entering the normal means. We're going up here, but then I'm going to do something else once we're in here. Ezofuji. Isn't it beautiful? Man, it sure is. Let's go. Forget what I just said. Uh, we can't actually do what I was thinking just yet for a very strange reason. Um, I'll explain that in, in a little bit. But anyway, uh, this is Ezofuji. Very strange place. This is the altar where the sacred sword Kutane was enshrined. There's a great view of Leochi Lake and Ezofuji from here. That's why they come here to pray to the mountain, pray to the mountains each year. Too bad it, the sacred sword isn't here now. The altar is also dedicated to the Ark of Yamato. It's said the Ark has been frozen in Leochi Lake for countless ages. Look, you can see it down there in the frozen lake. That's the Ark of Yamato. Ezufuji and the Ark of Yamato. This is a very special place for the Oina tribe. I can see they have the whole shrine thing going on here, and that's very strange. It looks like a ship, but looks very, very interesting. Okay, uh, there's a chest right here which will explain some of that. Another civilization. That explains that arc a little bit. Uh, but I'm going to be probably reading that uh, at the end of this episode. So for now, that will just have to remain a mystery. So this this path is actually very linear. We just skirt around the, the west side of the lake um, up this path. And there isn't much on this path, but there is a lot to do in this area. Nine praise. So, like I was saying, there is a lot to do here. Uh, you can actually get all of the stray beads right now. It's very interesting that they would do that. Also, I saw something. Did you guys see that too? Up there. And up there. There are twin platforms. Huh. I actually, I guess I've, I've had to notice that before, but I forgot about it. So we get a better view on the, the Ark of Yamato. There's very, very strange lines running around it, but it makes sense because that scroll's entitled Another Civilization. I guess now would be a, a good time to talk about this. I meant to talk about it earlier, but it just slipped my mind. Uh, when when Kemu had mentioned how they pray to the mountains each year to make them erupt and f make it warmer, it's a, a thought entered my mind. That's not actually how how nature works. Uh, when when a mountain erupts, it will actually make uh, it will make areas colder for the years following because the ash is in the atmosphere blocking the sun. Um, I believe after uh, there was this volcano er that erupted in. in uh, the early 1900s or 1800s, and it made what was basically an ice age in England. Um, but I, it just the names and places have, have kind of fallen away out of my mind. Um, and also St. Helens. St. Helens, after that blew, uh, there was there were ashes all over the globe, and it actually made places colder for a uh, few years following. So yeah, that kind of that's kind of a mishap. I mean, there are there are volcanoes that don't spew ash but still it wouldn't make it that warm but eh, let's just let's just roll that I, I don't want to over over analyze the game too much because it kind of makes it lose its charm so anyway uh, this this hut right here this is the destination we need to go for the story and so yeah let's go in if why can't I go in let me go in please why can't I go in there, I, I had to jump in. Okay, so we have this person. Tuskel. Uh, it doesn't really look it. I mean, from the build, I guess I can kind of extrapolate the information, but 
Tuskull is actually a woman and also the voice, but it like she show she's so covered up, like her face is covered up and everything. I always thought that she was a man, and then Nova was watching me one day and was like, "Oh, uh, that's a girl, pal." And I was like, "Oh, really? <laughs> yes, I know who you are. Yes, that divine look of yours is unmistakable. You're the legendary White Wolf Shirnui, aren't you? Wow, they've heard that name here too. Well, I suppose Shirnui's legend did travel across the sea to Kamui." That's interesting, because it suggests that we're actually on a different island than Nippon. So we are across some strait, so that tunnel went underwater, which is interesting. It's, I mean, I guess it's possible, but it's very interesting that we're on a separate island and we, we traveled here from underground. I guess it really resonates with the Oina because they're so spiritual. Oh, Isun. It's been a while, so uh, so you're still alive. Oina Shaman, Tuskel. <laughs> I ain't ready to kick the bucket yet. I just left on a little trip, that's all. Well, I'm glad to see you safe. As you can see, we have not been so lucky here in Kamui. Since the monsters were revived, many people have lost their lives. Yeah, I've heard about, about it. So, what's up with those demons coming back? And where in the world is Lika? Hmm. The demons have shut themselves up in Ezofuji's Waoku Shrine. They are responsible for the fierce blizzard raging throughout Kamui. We're managing to keep some of it at bay thanks to Afun Gate. But when the day comes, Kamui is sure to freeze over completely. That's not what worries me most, though. What worries me is how the demons were revived in the first place. Ki Kamu noticed it as well. J but just before the demons made their return, a dark force traveled here from the southern land. We both felt an evil energy flowing in Kamui. That's when the demons woke up, as if in response to it. Southern land. Oh, she must mean Nippon. In other words, she's talking about the return of Orochiyami. There have been so many monsters here in Kamui that some people even call it the birthplace of evil. I can't help think, but, um, that, ugh. I can't help thinking all this havoc in Nippon has its root in Leochi Lake, the eternally frozen lake at the foot of Ezufuji. There is a large lake called Leochi at the foot of Ezufuji. I think the reason Kamui is called the birthplace of evil is because of the Ark of Yamato that rests in that lake. The Ark of Yamato. Anyone from Kamui knows that story. It's said that the legendary Iron Ark fell from the heavens. My grandpa used to tell me that story. Long, long ago in the Age of Myths, an Iron Ark fell from the Celestial Plain above and sunk into Leochi Lake. The Celestial Plain is the land above where gods dwell. The gods are known as Celestials there. The Ark that the Celestials were on came crashing down to this land. It was as if they were being chased by something. What they didn't know was that on board with them were countless monsters. One by one, they were consumed until all the Celestials were dead. Once the Ark crashed, the monsters disembarked and started ravaging the lands. The world has not been safe since. It's said that the monsters still rise from the lake's depths. That must be why they call it the Ark, the Lake of Demons. That's about all I know about it. Hmm. I do have one thing to add to that. And that's the story of the one surviving Celestial of the Ark. The Ark fell to this world from the Celestial Plane. It was full of monsters, which killed the Celestials on board. But the legend tells that there was one man who, who survived. He managed to escape from the hell that the Ark had become. He then fled, going into hiding somewhere in our world. Hmm. First time I've heard that. They say the reason monsters still emerge from the, from the Ark in Leochi Lake is that the Ruler of Darkness is still searching for that man. Ruler of Darkness? Does he have a name? It is all just a legend. No one knows if it's true or not. No one has ever set foot on it. But the Ark brought tragedy to our world, that's for sure. If the powers of darkness in the world are gathering in Kamui, I believe it's because, because the Ark of Yamato is beckoning them. Hmm, hmm? I apologize for p chatting so much. Now, if you've come all this way, 
Am I to assume you have Kamu's permission? I speak of permission to enter Yoshpet, the Forest of Confusion. Yep, that's right. I really couldn't care less, but Ami hears another story. The entrance to the forest is sealed within the Oina Crest. It's our way of protecting the place from evil. There's no way that I can break the seal. But if the Elder has ordered your entry, then I must comply. Sure, Nui, you may have the Oina Amulet. Uh, I, I always call it Amulet, but I know it's pronounced like... Amulet? Uh, I can I could never pr pronounce that for no reason at all. Uh, say what? What's even harder to pronounce? Say Sewa Prolu. No, no, that's not right. Sewa Prolo. Sewa Prolo. And I'm not going to say it again. I cannot pronounce half the names that the Oina come up with. With that amulet, you can you can pass through the Oina Crest unhindered, and you can proceed on into Yoshpet. If the villager has deemed it to be right, there can be no mistake. You are the one who can find Lika. Find her before it's too late and Kamui freezes over. That I will. Thank you, Tuskel. You're a nice girl. Watch where you're, what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. And actually, I'm really interested because I don't know what her wolf form looks like. Wow, that's, that's sweet. Look at that. Let's talk to her. That's really cool. Like, she's blue! That's awesome. That's really, really cool. And she just... Wait. No, I don't want to... I don't want to... I don't want to see this again. I have other things to do. Uh, like, go to the menu. Because I, I originally said that the end of the episode would be the best time to read that scroll, but... I think now is actually a better time. So... Uh... There. Travel guide. Go all the way to the bottom. And right next to these are actually really interesting scrolls. I, I kind of just pass. Uh, I just kind of take them for granted, but they are very interesting. So I would actually like to read this first again. I know. Oh wait, no, this again, because it kind of makes sense now. After decades of internal debate, I have decided to write about the man who spoke to me regarding the celestial plane's destruction. I shall endeavor to shoulder the heavy burden of that man's fate. My brush shall act as a bridge to the shadowy past. The man had identified himself as a member of the Moon Tribe. The idea of life thriving on that desolate rock is mind-boggling. Furthermore, their civilization has far surpassed our own. Most of their ranks have succumbed to death, but this man had fled. He was silent on the topic of why his civilization was destroyed. What business could the Golden Tribe of the Moon have with us? I gaze into the distance, knowing the answer cannot evade me forever. Okay, so that's that scroll. I've already read that before, but another civilization sheds a bit more light on this. Modern Nippon offers mysteries that cannot be easily explained. Devices even scholars in the capital are unable to decipher. Stone artifacts that endow the wearer with special, special abilities. They are thought to be evidence of a civilization beyond our own. My great-grandfather often spoke on such matters. He had traveled to the windy plains of Taka Pass for brush training. While there, he noticed a strange light tracing an arc in the sky. The light eventually settled in the area of Saw Saw Sanctuary. Great-grandfather traveled there the following day, where the light had landed. He saw a mysterious symbol floating in midair. It is not uncommon to hear such tales repeated here in Nippon. Whether one believes this un this otherworldly civilization believes in this otherworldly civilization or not it would seem that many among us certainly want to believe I'm not ashamed to say that I count myself among their ranks so someone from around here witnessed uh, Kaguya yeah that's her name Kaguya land all those years ago so they must be pretty old because I believe um, I believe Mr. Bamboo was actually was pretty young when Kaguya landed so, maybe we'll meet that person. Maybe. So, what else do we should we be doing this episode? Or will we be doing this episode? Well, we're running fairly high on time. So, I think that I should just go through here and grab all the stray beads that are available to us. Stray beads and other collectibles. So, uh, first, I actually don't want to go up there because I believe... I just want to check. No... Okay, I just want to check that. If we if we vine on over to this bud over here, that will bring us to the first collectible. We don't 
we can just go down here. Will we make it? Yes, we will. Uh, let's destroy this rock. It should be fun. And then grab these clovers. These clovers will actually put us at enough, if I can bark here, to upgrade our health one last time, which is really, really sweet. So let's go ahead and do that. Each clover gives... No, come on. Uh, really? It's not that hard. It is not that hard. Thank you. Each clover gives 40 praise, so we get 80 praise in total. Let's go ahead and upgrade our health that last time that I was talking about. 350 praise, we'll put it at, let's see, what is that? That is 19 units of health. So that means there are only three, three sun fragments in the game that we need to be, to get full offensive stats. Um, astral pouch, the astral pouch is the last thing that I can upgrade and it only has one upgrade left. So that's what the rest of my praise will be going to. And after that, we're just going to be getting money from that. Uh, next is a chest that contains a stray bead. And it's right here on the map. Next, there is a there's a bud right there, Konohana Blossom. But there's also one right above us, which I will take that first. Because that leads us up here, there. And speaking of Sun Fragments, there's one right here. And then next, these, these are actually very easy to find. In practice, I found all of these stray beads. Well, most of them. I, I didn't grab, grab one, but I found most of them. Um, without needing the guide, so that's actually pretty cool. Okay, right here on the map is another collectible, a stray bead. So we've already gotten two stray beads and one sun, sun fragment, and then there's a clover here that has praise, 30 praise. Now, this is not actually over. Uh, let's see, where is that? Is it up? Let me look at the map here. I don't think it's up. I think it's... Yeah, it's it's actually down here. So if we jump down onto the lake... There we go. Uh, we can run over here, and there will be another thing available to us. Just right over here is... Another Konohana Blossom. If we vine on over to it... It will bring us to two chests. Uh, we can use the fire from this one to thaw that one. And then use wind on this one. The left one has a stray bead in it, and the right one has etched glass in it. Now, that is all the stray beads that we can collect right now. Um, the other one we should be able to collect, like we have the technique to be able to do it, but the story won't let us do it, which is kind of, it's kind of frustrating, I'll be honest, but uh, we'll be saving that for later. So, uh, with that... I think that's going to be it for this episode. I will be going into WebCure to end it off because there's nothing more available to us here. And also, I want to check into WebCure to see if something is available, just just in case. I'll do it off screen. Um, so let's go ahead and go into WebCure. Okay, so that thing I was I was checking on is not available to us. I guess I can go ahead and mention it. Um, in in Web in uh, Ezufuji, there's actually a skip travel location. There's an origin mirror that is off the map. It's another one of those secrets. But uh, in the story right now, skip travel locations are actually uh, disabled, so we can't use them. So I can't grab the last stray bead. That's why I was talking about how we we have the technique to get them, but we can't get them because of story. So it's it's a little bit upsetting. Also, that rock was that rock was levitating. So we'll be getting that once skip travel is restored to our list of powers. Uh, so, like I said, that's going to be it for this episode. I've said that like four times now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Next time in Okami, we'll be heading over to Yoshpet. Now that we have the Barkofoli Goshki Goku amulet, whatever it's called. Uh, the Prolo Skolo thing. So yeah, we're, we'll be going over to Yoshpet, which is uh, one of my one, one of my more... Uh, more enjoyable areas of the game. It's actually really cool, but we'll be getting to that when we get to it. I release new episodes of Okami Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Saturdays are long episodes, and if you like this episode, then comment. If you didn't like this episode, then comment how and tell me how I could make next episode so that you would like it. I will see you guys next time for another Pal Plays Okami.